Hello, Momo Khan. Uh, I hope you guys aren't tired of seeing my face yet. This is, I think, time number three uh, since Thursday. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Marley, uh, and I work for the Channel Frederator Network uh, here in New York City. Uh, today, we are going to be doing a panel with some of the wonderful talent that is uh, part of the network that I have the pleasure to work with on a pretty daily basis. And we're going to be talking about their journeys in YouTube and kind of what they think the the future uh, of YouTube is going to be and, you know, whatever other stuff uh, that crops up during our discussion. So why don't we go ahead uh, and introduce ourselves and then kind of give a like a, a quick overview of what you do for those people in the audience who might not know. Max, we'll start with you. Oh, awesome. <laughs> uh, hi, my name is Max. I go by MythSan on YouTube. Uh, I do pretty much general gaming uh, on YouTube. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Ross? <laughs> Hi, my name is Ross. I go by Your Pal Ross or Ross Friend on Twitch. Uh, I mainly, same kind of category, I mainly just do general, general gaming videos. Uh, Saber? My name is Steven Carver. I go by Saber <laughs> Spark on the internet. I try to talk about animation and pretend that I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least... Okay, my name is Leah, otherwise known as Tune Runes, and I do uh, animation review and also analysis, mainly Steven Universe. That's basically it. Same thing as Steven, basically. <laughs> uh, there's a comment in, in the chat already that says, hey, it's the furry, and I think we all know who they're talking about. <laughs> uh, Saber, do you want to say hi to your fans real quick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi, Ratchet. <laughs> uh, so <Hope> begins. <laughs> I think out of all of the various career paths uh, that I've encountered or have ever known about in my life, uh, YouTuber is probably one of the most peculiar and the road to get there even more so. Hello, so the tour. Uh, how did you guys uh, get your starts in this weird world of digital video uh i get max we'll start with you again awesome okay so <laughs> uh i i never actually intended to be a youtuber um when i was in school i really focused on like uh, multimedia and just creating videos in general and i was using youtube originally as like just a platform to upload i didn't even know you could make money off of it at the time um and then around 20 i think 15 i got a job offer up in washington which uh i worked for another larger youtuber Name Scott is Minecraft, and uh, it just kind of trickled from there. Like I, I gained my own audience, and it just kind of blew up from there. Cool, uh, Ross. How about you? Uh, for me, I've always just had uh, interest in in video creation. I remember long ago searching up on, on Google Video Super Mario sixty four, watching videos on there, and then slowly moving into watching like RuneScape videos on on YouTube and stuff like that. And then just always wanting to to make my own videos as well. And and just kind of, I did it always as a hobby on the side, like, and all that. And then slowly it just kind of blossomed into, hey, I, I can do this instead of going to my job kind of thing. <laughs> oh, God, nice, Google video. Nice, uh, Google video. <laughs> Saber. Almost flunked out of college. Got fired from two sales jobs with copiers. Reluctantly became a barista. Did that for a year and a half. Started doing YouTube just for can we almost say bad words for giggles <laughs> and 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 then uh, it took off because like someone else said before, um, it, the hobby it was just a hobby. I I mean I made it back in two thousand seven just so I can like make playlists and also like chronicleize <laughs> that's the right word YouTube poops and uh yeah after uh i, I kind of gave more traction when i was a barista making like cartoon videos while well, talking about <laughs> cartoons and then and then i realized oh wait i can make a job out of this so that's where it began cool leah so my start to youtube was very interesting so it was a hobby but it was a hobby in that i used to make amvs <laughs> a wow. lot <laughs> so oh, um no. <laughs> 
Same yes, fault? there was. I mean, there was a Naruto one. That's the thing. Um, it was to numb, actually. Oh, um, so that makes wow. it even worse. It might have been the one I'm talking about. <laughs> it it might have been. That's cliche. Um, I know. I know. It's very cliche. Uh, but then it started to go more into a career once I started making theory videos for Steven Universe, because anyone who's familiar with Steven Universe, there's a huge theory community in like the Rose's Pink Diamond. And the actually the first theory I ever made that ever gained traction was uh, did Pearl shatter Pink Diamond? And then that was it just from there, it just kind of grew. But yeah, it started off as a hobby pretty much like everyone else. I didn't go into it intending like, oh, hey, I'm going to have like 100,000 subscribers in like a year or two years. Like I didn't think that. So, so do you think because that seems to be a common thread amongst all of you and some some other YouTubers that I've spoken uh, to is that they kind of just start this for uh, the love of it or just for the fun of it. They don't really start out with necessarily a career in mind or the idea that uh, I'm going to be at X milestone by this time next year for my, you know, my big master business plan. Um, do you think that's is that the way to approach like being a content creator or or do you think it's possible to kind of launch into it with with uh i guess a business plan in place as well and whoever wants to to oh, yeah. take this one can <laughs> uh me personally i i see a lot of uh young kids nowadays they like i want to grow up and be a youtuber and i guess the for me that was never the mindset that i had it just kind of fell into place um, I don't think that's necessarily a bad mindset to have, but if you don't know what you're doing, it's going to be really, really difficult. Sure thing. Does any? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think too. If you're going into something with an expectation, um, like for an example, I know that there's a lot of younger people who want to be content creators that go into it with the mindset, "Oh, I want to be at this by this time," and mm -hmm. I think that if they put that in their minds. Um, it becomes a little harder to motivate yourself to make things when you aren't reaching that milestone at the point that you wanted to. So I think that um, it you can go into it with that mindset, but I do think that it makes it harder if you aren't growing as fast as you want to. Cool, cool. I remember going to this fall festival with my family back in like 2018 and I was standing in line for this ride with my little sister and there were these two kids behind us that were like watching a Fortnite stream and my <laughs> little sister who was like in her early 20s turns around and goes hey my brother's a YouTube celebrity and I was like no I'm not no I'm not I'm not <laughs> and the kids are looking at their phone look up and they go give me your phone I want to see your profile I'm like okay and they just looked at them and they go nice nice and I'm like, well, okay, well, what do you all, I'm, I'm curious, what do you all want to do when you grow up? Like doctors, scientists, and they're like streamers. And I'm like, dang, this really is it, aren't we? This is one of those things where it's like, I can't imagine how many kids in school right now are like, I don't care about being a teacher or a doctor or whatever. I'm going to be a streamer. I'm going to be a YouTuber. And I'm like, you know what? As someone who's done that, it's valid. Like I don't hold it against them for having that, those kinds of dreams. I mean, it's gotten tougher now because there's a lot more competition, but mm -hmm. like, I'm just thinking, like, at what time in college are we going to have like courses introduced if they don't already in exist? Where it's like, let's, I'm going to teach you, you know, college classes about how to become a YouTube streamer or a Twitch streamer or whatever. Well, I, I actually was reading something not too long ago that across like public schools uh, and especially like private schools, there's like an uptick in like video production classes happening now. I'm, I'm guessing it's not like specifically like here's how to, here's the YouTube class uh, for for high school credit. Uh, <laughs> <That'd be> but... <laughs> awful, actually. <laughs> Walk in there. This is a, a computer lab of kids screaming. Click that notification bell. And it's like, oh, no. what's up, guys? <laughs> it's me, your teacher. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, so, um, like. None of you guys, I would say, are like that YouTube old guard. You kind of joined in uh, on the platform when it was kind of already established. People had been making uh, money off of it. There were established figures. Uh, I would say it was probably already a very saturated marketplace at that time. Um, so how did you guys make yourselves stand out when you first started doing this like because that's i think that's one of the hardest things for most people who start doing youtube and it's why you know a lot of channels ultimately kind of 
fail, uh, to, to be quite frank. But you guys all clearly did something that made yourself stick out and, you know, gave you, uh, gave you value to your audience. So, so what did you think that you, you did? Be lucky. <laughs> <laughs> There, found- there, there's a good chunk of that of, of luck required where oh, you yeah. be the right place at the right time saying the right thing to the right audience and they click. the algorithm at the right time yeah the almighty algorithm praise be yep. the name. And- <laughs> there was, a, there was a, a moment of silence there where i felt like you all wanted to say that answer but nobody wanted to be yeah. the first. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's it's uh i mean this what we do is a I mean, it's a job career that can be very discouraging. So a lot of kids and young folks and, you know, not even just young folks, but old folks too, who were like, I'll give it a shot. And they try it and it doesn't click immediately. And they think that they're doing something wrong. It's their fault. And it's like, no, it's just, there's so much competition now. It's so hard to get into the algorithm because the algorithm is unforgiving. It just wants to, the algorithm doesn't care about you. You're a means to an yeah. end. And as soon as you're used up, it's like, get out of the way for the next, you know, young thing. So that, that being said, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> what, I, I, what, I guess the old guard you said you talked about the old guard and, and getting into it right like like, like like what what did you do to stick to stand out <laughs> well i springboard off the brony stuff back in 2012 which was like a bit of a a youtuber boot camp where it's like we're all making pony content because because <laughs> we're a bunch of freaks and i'm like sweet let's do it and then uh by from 2012 to 2015 i did that and then 2015 i'm like i'm done i got nothing else to say but ponies are cartoons. Let's talk about cartoons some more. And it just turns out that I'm not the only person who watches cartoons, apparently. And uh, that's how I got, I got lucky. I, I can't stress enough. I'm not sure a few other folks can agree to that, but how much is just like that day when your first video takes off in a significant yeah. way. And you're like, whoa, it clicked. I'm so lucky that it clicked. Let's run with that momentum now. Uh, specifically for me, it was uh, working with like a huge creator because my boss working for the company that I was had like, <laughs> 11 million subscribers so Jesus. working for yeah working for that company it was pretty easy for me to gain an audience but you also had to have a personality so like yeah. you can't just like i'm working for this guy Oops. so i'm just gonna get their audience but no like when i worked for that company i had i was playing i played a character i was the really angry dude who was just mad at everything and mad at life itself and people liked that so they they flocked to it but then whenever i was actually able to upload my own content i was like okay i'm gonna drop that and be myself but i already established who that was so to this day, I still get that. It's even though I'm trying to be myself, and it's, it's it's at the end of the day, it's it's luck, and unless you know people, it's 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 a rough industry. Well, you can like do the branding thing where it puts you in the corner, where it's like, yeah, that's what I'm built on, until you run out of ammo, and you're like, where do I go now? Yep. It's mm-hmm. a lot. Of, it, for yeah. me, at least, it was a lot easier to be myself than to play a character. Hmm. So I feel I, I fall into I, I worked for the same company that Max did. So I had the same kind of the trickle, like the large, the bigger, bigger audience. But it was one of those like stay being my own personality and bringing people because it, it was like a, it was a group of people. And there was the different like some people aren't still around kind of thing. And it's one of those like you got to you got to stay consistent. You got to stay kind of working on it. You can't like you you can get that piece of luck. But you gotta also be able to hold on to it and keep it keep it going. Yeah, well. you you have to provide value to your audience. Uh, you know, uh, so my former coworker and still very good friend Nick and I had a panel on uh, Thursday night about having weird internet jobs, uh, and part of it was talking about like you know how you get those and something I, I brought up is like, you know, it's not enough to just want something. And that seems to be a, a theme here too. Like it's not enough to just want to be a, you know, a big YouTuber or a big streamer. Like you also have to be providing value to the people uh, that you are trying to make content for. Uh, so, and like to link that back to the job interview discussion, it was like, you have, it's not enough to just want the job. You have to provide value to these companies that you're pitching yourself for. Uh, Leah, I'm really curious about yours, like how you tackled this, because I think out of all of the channels that have joined the network uh, since I started working there, at least, uh, you've had one of like the steadiest growth patterns, I think, that I've seen. And it's been uh, it's been amazing to watch. So uh, how did how do you do this? Um, Adding on to what everyone else was saying. Um, I think it's definitely a personality and luck factor at the same time. Um, so the thing with YouTube and 
internet in general, when you're streaming or making content is people are watching you for you. You can go on to any TV network and watch any program that is devoid of personality. The thing about YouTube and streaming specifically is that because we're running our own things and we're making our own content, we can decide what we're putting out and we can decide how to portray ourselves to a certain extent. Um, so I think that that has a lot to play into if people still want to watch you or if people want to subscribe and become part of your community. Um, I try to be generally very open with myself and my experiences when I am, let's say, um, for example, so Steven Universe uh, is a show that's very, very close to me, obviously, for a lot of reasons. Um, but I think what helped me specifically was I was linking my personal experiences to things in the show. And a lot of people like when they have somebody who they can relate to who's talking to them and talking with them about their favorite cartoon or a show that they really like. So I think that that helped with me because the analysis videos that I do, a lot of it talks about mental illness, a lot of it talks about LGBT plus issues. Um, so I think for me, that was probably what it was. Very cool. I feel like, I feel like, an older audience like kids you know we, we know that kids are out there watching youtube and and they're like one of the biggest sources of income if you know how to play your cards right but an but older YouTube audience doesn't want you to think that though no <laughs> no <laughs> well hi the those videos over there but honestly though I, I i think the older an audience gets the more like they look for genuine creators not for everyone but i do think that like when you look at a creator you can tell when they're genuinely talking about something they're passionate about and that it can become contagious where it's like, oh, they're really digging it. Like, I have no idea about, like, like okay, for me, um, I watch Warhammer videos. I've never played the game ever. But, like, the passion of these people talking about it, it's contagious. Same thing with, like, multiple channels where you have these creators who are just who are just so over the top about what they're talking about. And it's like, I want to know more because you speak with such, like, passion in your voice. And I want to, like, sparks my curiosity. That wasn't a pun, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I um we had a, a panel with uh Fred Seibert, our, our CEO, yesterday, and something that he said is that uh the current crop of people like actively watching stuff and actively uh like critiquing things and making people popular, there are there we're we have more content than ever before, but a lot of us are also busier than before ever before. So you know, our, our immediate thing is always, is this worth my time? Is it good? Yes or no? Or else, or else we move on. And, uh, I think, yeah, it, it's, you know, being genuine and knowing and feeling confident that you're putting good stuff out there is, is super important. So, uh, we kind of tease this a little bit, uh, with, uh, that little joke about, uh, the kids and whatnot, but, uh, YouTube, um, YouTube changes. YouTube changes uh, yeah. quite a bit, sometimes <laughs> even week to week. Um, and that can be a, a really scary landscape uh, to, to navigate. There are, you know, algorithm shifts. Uh, there are adpocalypses caused by uh, less than savory, more popular, uh, huge YouTubers, <laughs> oh, we'll say. Uh, you know, most recently, uh, there was the rollout of COPPA and there was a big hubbub over that um how do you how do you mentally deal with uh i guess an employer that changes the jobs rules day to day it seems like at sometimes and then on top of that sometimes doesn't even disclose the rules <laughs> uh, <laughs> it depends are we dealing with it <laughs> <laughs> What aren't you telling us, Marley? <laughs> uh, at least for me, YouTube is like an angry step parent. So I never know if they're going to be happy or sad with me or whatever. So I never really know what's going to happen. Uh, for the whole COPPA thing, the biggest thing that happened to me was I needed to branch out outside of YouTube. So like uh, Twitch or selling more merchandise. Like don't just rely on, don't put all your eggs in one basket. So that's that's definitely what YouTube taught me. And especially if you're, not a very large or uh notable creator you're kind of just at least to me you kind of just feel like a number on youtube and if yep. you're not one of those higher ones then you're you're out of luck <laughs> like you can either have a job one day or not and it yep. all depends on the algorithm you have to realize and understand how 
precarious these careers are because like you could be on the top of your game and then all of a sudden youtube's like i find you boring <laughs> and then, <laughs> <I don't... laughs> you make me sad <laughs> now Lee. No, no more recommendations for you <laughs> oh the fairy's back bat him but uh, the um honestly though that's how it is because again like okay that's just like the i've had a i've had big conversations with my friends about this about like the business aspect of youtube versus the art aspect and at the end of the day the business side will always win because it's a business and that means that as soon as you are like rocking the boat or you're not you're not churning up the money that youtube wants out of you because guess what they want that out of you you're out so like you have to realize that like Again, it's precarious because I realized that next year I, my child could be dead. It could be gone. And mm -hmm. and that's why I gamble uh, on the stock market every day because I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but honest to God, though, like, I, I guess I'm not sure if y'all can relate, but like the, the amount of luck required to get where we are is significant. But at the same time, you can get just that fist of unluck just punch you right in the face. And it's mm -hmm. like you just went right back to where you began. And it's oh, like, yeah. you, it's, it's a razor's edge. You can just I, you can rise and fall like that. I've been on YouTube for, I want to say, roughly almost five years. And I've hit an algorithm. I started like a trend on YouTube once. And I it, it did really well for me. And then it died in like a month. Wait, what like, was the trend? Uh, randomizer in Minecraft. Okay, word, word. Yeah. So that, that was a really big peak for me. And then... Everyone else in the community was like, oh, cool, a new trend. And then everybody did it. And then it was oversaturated. God dang it. And I was like, cool. I rode that train while I could. Well, it's, uh, and, and I guess like it requires so much, not just luck, but also it takes a bit of uh, the creator to be, like you have to adapt. You have to be able to read the landscape in front of you to go, what's going to change next? What can I do to increase my odds? So the luck is on my side. I think that also pays off where like it also pays off to diversify your content where don't just do YouTube. Maybe you start up a live stream as well on Twitch on the side, just so you can have the loyal fans or on Patreon and, and get that third party support. I don't know. It, it, it helps, though. Whatever helps buffer the fall whenever it does come <laughs> inevitably. So is there an apprehension uh, when you reach that adaptation point? Like, is it? What is it like when you reach that point and you you know you're at a crossroads where all right I can either keep doing the same thing and maybe I don't grow as much but I know I'll have steady regular viewers or I can risk it all and try this new thing uh, to hopefully you know subserve uh, Susan Wedge to blah 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 blah. <laughs> uh, is, is there like a nervousness that comes when you reach that point and how do you overcome it? Uh, Leo, I'll, th I'll throw it to you. Um, I mean, yeah, there's always a nervousness, especially when um, you're getting a substantial amount of income from it and you're depending on that somewhat. Um, I think that with this job specifically, though, or any type of streaming or YouTube job, you need to be somewhat willing to take risks. Um, that's just part of the job description, because if you don't take risks, um, you're probably just going to stagnate at a certain point. Um, so I think you just have to do it and just maybe start experimenting while you're also putting out the content that you know works um, just so that way you have it to offset you. But I, I say you, you just have to do it. I mean, it, it is scary, definitely. Um, but it's either that or you risk your channel dying, you risk getting <laughs> booted out of the algorithm, which does happen mercilessly. Mm -hmm. um, so... I yeah, I just say you have to go for the jump. It's part of the job description. And what about you, Ross? Um, I feel this is this kind of kind of weird weird wording on this, but I feel like comparing it to being like a pen salesman, like people people are gonna know you for selling your blue pens all the time. Exactly. <laughs> they, they, might, they might get tired of the blue pens for a while, but they'll know you for selling blue pens, and maybe maybe you'll start trying some red ink sometimes, selling some red, and you'll see if that works as well. Like you can kind of test the wall, but if that doesn't work, you still got your blue pens to fall back on. But there is a chance maybe people aren't gonna want blue pens like all the time i know weird 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 way to word it but it's one of those like you never know if what you're doing is going to stick or if you do like it never hurts to experiment in small ways or maybe you're going to start selling pencils for a little bit see how that yeah. goes yeah it, like it, you it never seemed, yeah okay. it, 
Sorry. <laughs> I was just going to say, you never know. Yeah, it, it seems like a, I guess, a balancing act of like, yeah, doing balancing the plate of new things on this hand, but also providing some of the old stuff on this hand. That way you don't, I guess, like lose people, uh, which seems like it can be, I guess, like uh, super, uh, super stressful, I, I could imagine. I mean, I deal with it from a very different perspective in that like, I'm, I guess, more in the back end and then like talking to you guys about things. Uh, but I like, yeah, I, I can't can't imagine uh, what that feels like. Um, I, I had a very, very short stint as a YouTuber. Uh, and and so I, I didn't, I guess, get that deep into the weeds at the time. But as I learn more and more about it at this job and stuff, uh, it's, I, I think uh, there's a lot of, People don't give you guys enough credit for how much work really goes into this job, I think. Oh, tell my mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I think the main goal, like if, if, if it can be summarized, and, and you all can correct me if I'm wrong, or at least wait on the opinion, but I think one of the biggest goals for a content creator is bringing your audience in with your content, but getting them hooked on the creator. That way, your content can change, but they're there for you. I know a lot of folks love Markiplier for Markiplier. They don't care what he's watching, what he's talking about, what he's doing. It's it's Markiplier. Same with Game Grumps, PewDiePie, whatever. That's like the end game for being a content creator. Because like, look at like okay, just random name off the top of my head, John Tron. You know, he did did video games, and now he talks about whatever he wants. And I'm like, that's like the street life right there, yeah. where you can say with like 100 percent surety that's a word. <laughs> that I can upload a video of anything I want because they're not there. My audience is not there for the context of the video of like the topic. They just want to hear what I have to say about it. And that's like the dream job right there. That's what that that's the YouTuber dream, the oh, yeah. Twitch dream. Not, sorry, not only that, but the dude can take a year off and come back I, and everyone's still there. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say yeah, that, that like it's impossible on YouTube. <laughs> that's it literally impossible. For a year. I got YouTube's like, take a week off. Because we care about your mental well-being. At the same time, they got that, that new like statistics on like the dashboard where it's like, oh man, you your views are down by a percent. Things are looking pretty bad right now, guy. <laughs> Look at all these red numbers. Oh uh -oh. no, I'm down. <laughs> One video did really bad. Let me tell you about it over and over again. <laughs> did you understand did. why this video did the way it did? You no, I didn't. <laughs> we are disappointed in you. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Right? This one did better. Why don't you look at this one more? What'd you do better on this one? <laughs> look at your brother. Your brother did better. <laughs> it's a lot of YouTube things. Well, and, and they'll tell you that this one uh, is doing better and that this one is doing worse, but they won't tell you why. And then when nope. you ask out for help, they're like, well, we can't review those secrets to you it's just like then why yeah. are you telling us then <laughs> i swear there's like i don't know it's never mind i don't know youtube is a cruel mistress to say the least there are days where she comes in and punches you across the face and the days where she's <laughs> this of, like chocolate cake you're like yo thank you i mean they, there's there's been times where it's like all green money's down though <laughs> right <laughs> you, <laughs> you <laughs> saw Everyone's watching you. Views are up. You're doing great. We're going to pay you a little less, though, if that's okay. <laughs> no, it's, well, it's I mean, that's crazy, for, too. Yeah. Oh, I apologize. No, go um, ahead, Max. Even like I know we were just talking about John Tron, like how he can take a year off, still get all that. But it, like even with the like the size that he is, he still has trouble with YouTube because he was off mm -hmm. on Twitter yesterday. Oh, yeah. Yesterday. He's got a, a copyright thing and YouTube's ignoring him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yep. And it was for something, too, if you watch the clip that there wasn't even a song in and somebody claimed it saying that there was a song there. It was the section in his new video where he was sneezing and they're like, I don't know. That, that, that was my that was actually my sneeze. Uh, come, that's my video now. Actually, uh, John Trump better lawyer up. I tell you that as, as, a, as a quick aside, uh, there was I remember when the switch first launched. Uh, Nintendo was claiming videos that had the sound effect as no, like, oh my really? god are you serious <laughs> Nintendo's Nintendo's so like amazing with making these incredible games but when it comes to online community stuff it's like <laughs> like yeah. they are in last I, I would say they're not even placed when it comes to online <laughs> they're not even the running <laughs> they, it's, I, it's silly 
I think they they eased up uh like since then when like there was a huge outcry but I just in the same vein I thought that was really funny. Uh so uh speaking on what Ross was saying where like everything in, in is in the green and money is down. How are you guys navigating the current COVID landscape because I know definitely within Channel Frederator network and uh other YouTubers as a whole we're seeing a lot of reports of you know like oh wow like watch time and views are literally better than they have ever ever been um but i am making uh way less money now um how are you guys navigating that as creators alcohol <laughs> <laughs> i'm uploading daily and i'm making half of what i make yeah it's, right it yeah. sucked the CPM is so, so ridiculously low right now. So dumb. Um, your watch yeah. time's up. Your view time's up. Your subscribers are up. You've made $7 this month. It's like, oh, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to think like, I mean, I think it's important. Like they were saying not to just rely on YouTube for monetary income. Like, Personally, I do freelance editing, so I have that on the side always to fall back on. Um, so I'm not constantly like, oh my god, the CPM is like seven cents right now. I can't like live on this. Well, um, Leah, did you get that one notification on the dashboard where it's like YouTube's like, hey, so we know things are tough right now. Like, you've got an extra kidney. Like <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa, that's a different pop-up. No. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's, honestly, that's them being more straightforward with us than they ever are. So. <laughs> right? Well, they're actually telling the truth. <laughs> yeah, for once. Listen, you, um, you know you got two lungs, all right? So like. Yeah, you can you can live without one of them. <laughs> don't be greedy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I think it's important not to just rely always on YouTube because I think the theme of what we've been talking about in this panel is that um, <laughs> it's not very stable. And I think that that's something that you definitely have to be prepared with mm -hmm. if you decide to continue with it for more than just a hobby, that it's not stable and it's always changing and you should never 100% rely on it unless you're somebody like the size of Markiplier, where like it doesn't matter if he has a bad month, he can recover from that. A lot of smaller creators can't. So yeah. there, there's... um. A certain level of like, okay, so it's almost like you take on this really cool challenge of like you're a content creator, which is like teach their own. Some folks don't want that uncertainty, but there's a certain level of uncertainty with what we do where there could be a month where it's like, wow, this is a really good month. Sweet. Versus a month where you completely just get dropped by YouTube and it's like you're making less than minimum wage. Yeah. And that's the price you pay. This is such an uncertain platform. You cannot guarantee anything. I mean, Apocalypse came out of nowhere. And a lot of us were like, oh God, like we're making half of what we used to make. And there are some times where it's like, can you imagine going to work? Let's say you went to your office job and your boss is like, hey, um, good work today, but I'm not paying you because your video got copyright claimed, bye. <laughs> it's like, oh cool, I guess I'm, not getting, I'm not getting paid this week. And that's what it feels like. And so there's a certain level of, it's like you take the ups and the downs where it's like, there are days where you can have a really good day and there are days where you just feel completely screwed. So that's a big part of what we do is knowing there's a certain random element of, of, of good and bad to it all. And we're constantly trying to adapt and understand it and roll up the punches. And we already have this defeatist attitude of like, we're gonna get screwed, aren't we? Uh, <laughs> yeah. We might as well brace ourselves. And that's why we do things to supplement that, that hit with like Patreon, Twitch, uh, art commissions, editing, um, things like that, uh, you know, stream on Twitch just whatever we can do to help soften the blow because YouTube alone is very difficult. And it's cool because I want, I, I imagine all of us are just happy to even be here to talk about it to begin with. Like what a cool yeah. I know, it's pretty, it's, it's, it's very ironic if we're like, oh, I hate this platform. I, I hate like this job. job though. Uh, <laughs> so bad at job. Uh. Because I, I imagine a lot of us, you know, we get to wake up, you know, make our own day, schedule it. I want to wake up at 10. I'm with my, my PJs. I'm going to get some coffee at 11. And then I'll start writing, you know, or do whatever I want from like 12 onward. I'm just making up a schedule. But still, like there's a certain level of freedom. It, there, there are the ups and downs with it. it. It's it's being your own boss as well, like mm -hmm. making your own schedule, having your own own discipline. Because I know like I, I can get into a bad habit where 
I treat a day as a, a day off when I should be working. And it's one of those, right? I'm not, not yeah. disciplined. Like yeah. it, I'm not being, I don't have someone above me like saying like, Hey, did you get your work done today? I have to, I have to sit down and, and did I get my work done? I didn't. Well, now I got to face the cut. Like in a sense, you have to be on top of yourself. Yeah, a hundred percent agree. It's a, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. It's, it's a very, you, yep. but if you don't do yeah. your job, you don't, you don't get paid. Yeah. yeah. You have to be disciplined because there are days where yep. it's like, I love to just play video games or just watch cartoons or whatever. And it's like, no, you should be writing and editing and recording or streaming or just being proactive. You have to be ahead of the curb. And it's like, oh man, like even on the weekends, I feel like I don't get weekends. They're just extended work days. Yeah. So it, it's know. that, it's like a loop of like, I all, it's that constant, I am working. Oh, I, I'm on a break right now. I'll get back to where, and it's like, it can be a very bad loop to get into as well. Yeah. Now, we are not selling. <laughs> it's, right it's, a, it's really, no you can make, make your own hours, you know, it's great. <laughs> you so, cry in the car. It's, you cry it's the, the self. It, I just saw in chat, it, it's the self-employment hustle as well, because that isn't YouTube exclusive. It's being Free. self-employed as That's well. That's why people always yeah, ask freelance. me to like, be a YouTuber. It's like, just start it out as a hobby. Don't, don't That's, always aim yeah, for it. Like, I, have fun with it. I would never go into it right away trying to make it your profession, because you're going to get burnt out so yeah. fast. Scourge, burned out. Yep, that by the and, time you're at the point where you're going to start gaining traction, you're not going to want to do it anymore. So... It's you just, all... I... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, it's fine. Um, I was going to say that I know, especially when the algorithm is not treating us nice, um, it's difficult for me too, to find the motivation to work on something or to put my all into it, which is also the double edged sword with being your own boss. Mm. That it's sometimes mm. it's really hard to push yourself to finish something that you know you need to get done. But at the same time, you're thinking, oh, I'm spending like 10 hours on this and it's going to get like 10,000 views and I'm not even going to get paid like $30 for yep. it. So it's like a very difficult thing to deal point. with. It's hard yeah. to be passionate about something that the business side of you is like, this isn't going to make that much. Yep. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. I like what I'm doing. And it's like, you're not going to be able to afford rent this month. And it's like, I guess we'll do another, what, what, what sells on the channel? Okay. Um, furry stuff. Okay. It's furry stuff. You know that it's tough. It's 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 tough when you feel like you're the creative aspect of you, which is usually a lot of us go off of that initially, is being compromised by the business aspect. Which, to yeah. be honest, I completely understand. Like, yeah, pay rent, you gotta buy groceries. So I, I don't hold that against people for trying to make that cheddar. But so, yeah, uh, Saber, something you brought up uh, or earlier on in the discussion is it, it's. It's one of these jobs where, uh, you know, your boss can just decide not to pay you and you more mm. or less just kind of have to roll to the punches or roll with the punches. Excuse me. Um, do you guys feel like YouTube has some kind of obligation to you and that maybe that they should, I guess, be a little more flexible? Like how how would you guys like to see the platform change as we you know as we move forward uh because it's not going anywhere anytime soon uh i i think google uh has ensured that uh we're, we're going to be using youtube for a very very long time what was saturday morning cartoons or cartoon network for my generation god i sound old <laughs> is now like <laughs> I, I have some nieces i have one it's eight six and then two i think i'm a good uncle and they they all love YouTube. That's their that's their entertainment. So yeah, it's it, it's like what the way that Cartoon Network grew up with me. They're growing up with YouTube, and YouTube has been going through that Wild West phase, but it's now becoming a lot more tame because YouTube's like whoosh, cracking on the whip and like getting people fall in line now. We need but, Jimmy Fallon to give us money. So <laughs> <laughs> he's my favorite independent content creator, Jimmy Fallon. He really needs his channel subs. But, I was good at yeah. I love Will Smith. Number one for me. <laughs> I love it. These poor A-list celebrities need their YouTube channels, guys. Stop wasting their time. Oh man, it's rewind time. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, wanna, that's hot. Oh, ah, that's, that's hot. hot. That's hot. <laughs> god damn it, you <laughs> Will Smith. It, it, it's it's just weird. I don't know. Look, I I know a guy named Black Griffin. All right, got four million subscribers. He was on the goddamn youtube rewind this past year and even this guy who is soared you know it's a great length is still struggling where he's like it's still unpredictable i feel like youtube there's a, there's a privileged amount of people who actually have like the 
the wiggle room to know that they can take like a month off and come back like John and Tron. But then a lot of us are like, we, we don't know. There's so much uncertainty with what we do with it. With every single upload, we don't know what's going to happen. Because you can upload, it's completely in the green. As soon as you press upload, it's like, and it's demonetized. Yep. UMG comes rolling in. <laughs> oh, they, they need their money. Yeah, they hum need that it so little, bad. You hum that a little too close to the tune of our song. <laughs> yep, a little too <laughs> right? close. We're going to demonetize that, your whole was, video. Was that two seconds of the Curb Your Enthusiasm theme song? I'm sorry, take it down, take it down. So, I, Well, anybody think of the corporations, all right? They've been suffering. They need help. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so I, I guess, Ross, how do you, like, do, do you think YouTube has some, like, obligation to you guys? Do you think they will ever admit that? I feel like it's a big, it's a big mixture because it's, it's, it's the handshake of YouTube, wouldn't be where it is without the creators but the creators wouldn't be here without youtube yeah. mm -hmm. and it brings the point where it's like if i've heard the the mentality of like if you don't like it you can always go somewhere else well it's like how how many big vimeo stars have you guys heard right <laughs> i i hate that i, I hate, hate when people <laughs> use that <laughs> thank you when people on Twitter like just go, so go, so to, go to vimeo go go to daily motion it's like there's seven people who can watch stuff on there so, i don't know it's what like you're like talking eight. about guys i have 25 whole followers on daily motion <laughs> go another, to quibi another insult that i usually get thrown at me is like why don't you go get a real job now then like oh, thank oh dude. that's dude, that's dude. a way to wave, give the... wave in front of your camera, Max. No, like oh. put your hand in front of it and wave. It's you're out of focus. You're out of focus. <laughs> no. If you put your hand right in front of it and do this, it refocuses. Oh. Take out that's your what credit I'm saying. card. <laughs> hold your credit card. <laughs> Start <laughs> wiggling it a little bit over. Show <laughs> your and then it'll be back. He did it. No, honestly though, like you know, no. I I hear that a lot, and I think like there's been a bit of uh over this past decade in particular like to see the legitimate legitimate like okay i'm not sure if y'all can relate to this but like when i started youtube my family like dismissed it like oh get a real job yeah until they realized oh well he's actually doing something with this and and making a living he can provide for himself and that's when like all of a sudden it almost felt like it was like a snap where they were like now very interested like i was at my cousin's wedding right after i passed 100,000 subs and it was back in like 2016. And my family was just enamored with what I was doing. Just asking so many questions. And I'm like, okay, this is this goes to show you that a lot of this comes from uh, an ignorant point of view. And that's not to have a go at them. But they just don't know. They don't know. They're from a different generation. And it takes them some time to finally catch up with the modern day and go, oh, wait, you can make money doing this. Like, not just okay money, but like real money. Yep. I mean... Guys, I bought two Lego sets in the last week. <laughs> I'm, I'm rich, but, um, but no, honestly though, I, I think that was that was cathartic for me to see family actually like acknowledge your what you do as a career. It's not just some willy nilly hobby, and I, that that was really nice. And I and I also understand where they're coming from because there are a lot of people who have these aspirations to be a YouTuber, Twitch streamer, whatever. Yeah. A content creator online it's difficult it, 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 it becomes more difficult it becomes more available but the competition is very very stiff so like that was um what was the question marley i'm going off on <laughs> uh, oh, my it, favorite ice cream flavor yes chocolate i'm sorry it, it was originally like you know d does does YouTube. does youtube have an obligation to you guys I wish they would. I wonder if there will ever be a YouTube union, which I'm sure you'd be like, no! <laughs> no! I, mean, no! I remember, sorry to kind of, it's like, I remember there it. was a point I, I had like a YouTube contact for a little bit where there was someone and that I think I think they left or I don't, I, I haven't God, spoken to that person. And ye it's like, I remember when I first like started growing and stuff, it's like, I could have someone at YouTube to talk to and it was nice. And now it's like, I... I haven't heard from a YouTube like related person in no. so so long. I, I guess why why YouTube old. does it, but at the same time, like it's always kind of a There's little at least to me, people. it's disheartening to me when I see like huge creators go, "Give me a sec, guys, I'll go talk to YouTube to see what's going on." It's like, okay, that's cool. Why do you get that privilege? I yeah, know. Right? Yep. I feel like in terms of, I don't feel like they owe anything sure. but i think what they owe is some clarity on things because a lot of the stuff that they offer mm -hmm. for us in terms of explanations are incredibly vague mm -hmm. and we don't understand 
necessarily what it means. And then we're also like they were talking about earlier. Um, we don't have any contacts like the way that I contact YouTube is through Frederator, which helps me out a lot as a network. Um, but personally, I've never talked with anyone at YouTube. I've only talked to them through my contacts at Frederator who have helped me get into contact with them. So I think like very base level, I think clarity would help. I know that they say that they don't like to give it because there's bad faith creators that will take advantage of the system if they do. But at the same time, like you're not going to have any creators if your actual creators don't know what they're doing. So yeah, and that uh, actually that folds perfectly into the next part of the discussion. Um, uh, this is a question from Manly Stanley. Uh, I and love I, that name. <laughs> I love that name. I think it's directed towards me, but I think we can all speak to it. Um, he asks, uh, how is Frederator Network combating the turbulent algorithm and YouTube changes and helping to keep creators above water? Any personal anecdotes from the creators on this as well? And I, I know on uh, Frederator's front, um, we realize that the MCN space uh, is one that is not looked upon kindly by most people uh, who are content creators. Um, and we kind of actively try to be, I think, the opposite of that and provide real value for the people that sign with us. And something that's been a big focus since I joined the company uh, two and a half years ago is uh, coming up with new uh, opportunities for creators, kind of getting them involved in community events offline as well as online, uh, stuff like MomoCon Line, which was supposed to be an in-person event that we were going to fly you guys uh, out to originally. Um, you know, we established a travel grant that, Leah, I believe you made use of last yeah. year. I think you actually were the genesis of that idea, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> which uh, creators can kind of use to offset costs to get to events to help them make more content or to meet up for collab opportunities and stuff like that. And then we also have, we know that YouTube is, it, at the end of the day, it's all about content. And uh, we have the Million Dollar Fund, which uh, is kind of set up to help people create uh, their next big ideas or to outfit their channels a little bit more if they need to. Uh, Max, I know you made use of that. And Saber, you just launched a show uh, with it. Um, drunk recap, go check it out. It's very <laughs> funny. Um, Thank you. <laughs> so I, I guess from Frederator's side, um, a bit we're just trying to create value both on and offline so that, you know, maybe YouTube isn't the only thing people have to rely on. Or if they are going to be relying on YouTube, we can at least hopefully shoulder uh, some of the burden. Um, I don't I don't I, I feel like I bragged. Uh, so I'll pass it to uh, to one of you guys to talk about. <laughs> A little bashful. <clears throat> Frederator is the best <laughs> network read it. I've ever read been. It. Um, read it. <laughs> <laughs> the best, it's a spot everywhere. Damn it. <laughs> no, honestly. So I, if I ever if I get another invite from BBTV, I'm gonna lose it. I, I, oh. BB, oh. Oh. If I get, hey, buddy, <laughs> just talk with the won't stop. I hate it. I blocked just... it. One of them. <laughs> I block them. Oh. Block them on the spot. No, I, I, I'll be real. If, if, I, if I, 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 honest to God, mean this. When it comes to genuine networks, they're few and far between. Frederator's been legit. They've been helpful. They've reached out. Marley, I appreciate the role you play in that, and that you. I mean, it's just hard to find a person. The fact like most networks come across as like, we'll give you five percent. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, oh, wow, I get to be part of the same network as uh, Game Grumps, or I'm not even sure they're part of a network, yeah. but you get the point. Like, they, they, they try to sell you on, like, being part of a, of a family, but in reality, you just join, it's a waste of money. Whereas Frederator, where it's like, no, we want to actually grow your channel and cultivate it. And, and you've all put your money where your mouth is, and I appreciate that, and, and just having that to fall back on is, it's been a good experience. I've been doing this since, for five years now, and I've never had a complaint. So, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just being legit. If there was a complaint, I'd mention it, but I've, I literally have zero. You've all been great. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, does anybody else want to, I guess, talk on their experience? I feel like I'm putting Me. you all on the spot with this, <laughs> I mean, with this question, but <laughs> I, I can, I can kind of, I don't know like how much 
to really like to compare I a previous network like to compare network wise I was with a previous network where I had a a worse channel revenue split and they I had little to no contact I think my original contact left without telling me Jeez. so when I when I tried to email him it ended up like someone else was like hey I'm sorry like I'm not the one who can help you but I'll find someone else eventually like i had trouble contacting them and it's like i know comparatively it's like i i have bought like i talk to marley every like couple of weeks and it's like really nice to be able to touch base and like talk about what's going on actually having a connection uh with someone on a network and not just being like oh you're part of the network that ha as like say like said oh this network has this person in it you and it's like I've seen that so many times in emails. It's like, we have these people under our belt and we'd like to add you under our belt as well. And That's like, like your main song points every single time. <laughs> hey it's there. Like, would you, you, would you like to join the filing yeah. cabinet? <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, and I yes, know- Yes, I uh, do. I want to be part of BBTV. I, I do. <laughs> Broadband know, uh, TV. Why not? Ma Max took uh, took advantage of how Marley mentioned like the the fund as well, and Ma Max being my roommate, I actually used some of the equipment he bought, and it was like really nice to be able to to use that equipment to like try try a new thing. I tried I mainly do gaming content. I tried doing goofy food reviews for a while using like Ooh. content, and it was it was like it was a lot more fun, and it was one of the I had fun with it, but it was one of those it wasn't grabbing as well, and that that was me trying. I tried something different. And it was, I was given the, like being able to have that resource to even try it was really nice to do. For, for me, uh, Frederator, whenever I get to talk to Marley every couple of weeks, like I don't bang my head against the wall. It's like, oh, I actually look forward to our talks. Because I like, mm -hmm. I, I, I feel like I've, me and Marley have become friends. I don't put words in your mouth, but <laughs> we, we definitely have. <laughs> and the Frederator has done more for me than any network I've ever been with. And, <laughs> I mean, the bar is already really low with those other networks. That was really <laughs> That's <what> <laughs> Yeah, um, you know, it's it's just I think the common theme of this discussion has been you need to provide value. Uh, YouTubers need to provide value to their audience. Networks need to provide value to the creators that sign with them. Uh, and YouTube is going to kind of do uh, whatever the hell it wants. Um, we are, I think, right at the end of our time. So if people want to take a, a minute to uh, plug where you can find uh, where they can find your stuff, uh, go on ahead and we'll wrap things up. Uh, Max, we'll start with you. Awesome. <laughs> uh, you mainly find me on uh, YouTube and Twitch. Just search M-I-T-H-Z-A-N. That's, that's pretty much it. That's it. All right, Ross. I uh, I go by your pal Ross on ninety five percent of uh my my social media. Someone someone stole my Twitch, so your pal Ross is not me on Twitch. I go by Ross friend, so your pal Ross anywhere, but Twitch it is Ross friend. Uh, Saber, find me on MySpace, Live Journal, OnlyFans, <laughs> um, Four Square, <laughs> Four Square, <laughs> PBS, um, Saber Spark on Twitter and YouTube. That's where I am. I'm not funny. Don't follow me. <laughs> Leah. <laughs> um, Toon Runes on YouTube and Leah C underscore official on Twitter is mostly where I'm active. Awesome. Uh, you can follow the Channel Frederator Network on YouTube and Twitter and Instagram. Uh, if you look up Channel Frederator Network or Channel Frednet, we should show up. Uh, if you want to follow my personal feeds, I am uh, Rebellious Ewok. No underscores, no spaces. Uh, all opinions are mine and not my employers. Um, and <laughs> we have one more panel tonight at 9 p.m. EST. Uh, and that one is going to be focused on uh, YouTube animators. So I'll be joined by Jake Neutron, Ivan Animated, and Circle Tunes HD. So make sure to tune in for that. Uh, thank you to Momocon for having us. And I think we and we should end things on the Frederator uh, catchphrase. Ready? I'll count us in. Move catchphrase. <laughs> Frederator loves you. The sign yeah, off of literally all of our videos. Sorry, it, got, it, got, it got smudged on my hand. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you used the white ink on the paper. Three, two, one. Frederator, Frederator loves you.